Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Anne Reesim. And I'm Edna Zaire. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Court acquits three building professionals of involvement in construction of Henry Tang's illegal basement. Education Minister promises to help Tin Shou Wei Kindergarten face enclosure because of massive rent rise. Financial Secretary warns public services will suffer if budget bill is delayed by LegCo filibuster. A court has acquitted an architect, an engineer and a contractor of all charges over their involvement in the construction of an illegal basement in former Chief Secretary Henry Tang's Kowloon Tong home. Tang welcomed the verdict and apologised to the three defendants for the disturbance and emotions they and their families had to go through during the trial. Architect Henry Ho, engineer Wong Pak Lam, and a representative of contractor Hen Lee Engineering arrived at Kowloon City Court this morning to hear their fate. After being charged with one count of building without planning approval between 2005 and 2007, and one count of knowingly misrepresenting information to the building authority. All three had earlier denied working on or having knowledge of the illegal 2400 square foot basement in former Chief Secretary Henry Tang's Kowloon Tong home that derailed his bid to become Chief Executive. In handing down his 82-page verdict, Acting Chief Magistrate Clement Lee said he did not accept the testimony of all the prosecution witnesses and other expert opinions because they were unhelpful. The magistrate noted that some of the testimony tended to be more theoretical and not concrete enough for him to accept. He ruled that there was no direct evidence of illegal structures being in place before the buildings department issued an occupation permit to the Tangs in 2007. If the structures were constructed before the permit was issued, Lee said buildings department officials who usually visit construction sites for inspection could not have missed such a large excavation. Tang today welcomed the verdict. There are many unauthorized structures, and I think we should come up with a way to handle the issue in a lenient manner, he told reporters. He said he was deeply sorry to the architect, engineer and contractor for the disturbance and emotions that were caused to them and their families in the process of the trial. Tang added that work is underway at his York Road home as he seeks to dismantle all the unauthorised structures. The former Chief Secretary also thanked the Buildings Department for its professionalism in the investigation, adding that he hoped today's verdict marked the end of the whole saga. The basement that landed him in hot water was dubbed an underground palace and reportedly had lavish facilities including a wine cellar, home theatre, gym and Japanese bath. Tang, who is now a member of China's top political advisory body, the CPPCC, was not charged in the case. His wife, Lisa Kuo, was fined $110,000 in November after pleading guilty to charges of carrying out construction work without approval. Education Minister Eddie Ung says the government is trying to help a kindergarten in Tin Shui Wai find alternative premises after a massive rent increase saw it priced out by a rival. The government is also looking into complaints that the rival kindergarten is charging parents enrollment fees, even though its new premises have not been registered yet. ATV's Bo Lang reports. Top Kids Anglo-Chinese Kindergarten will have to shut its doors when its lease expires at the end of August after being priced out of the premises in Kingswood Villa, Tin Shou Wai. Top Kids had offered to pay $200,000 more than its current monthly rent of $260,000, but it was rejected by the landlord who will lease the premises to another international preschool, Zenith International Education Foundation. On the radio show this morning, President of the Hong Kong Kindergarten Association, Mary Tong, noted there has always been fierce competition among kindergartens, but it's rare for one operator to price out another while it's still up and running. Tong warned this is unhealthy and will jeopardize education, as most of the tuition fees will have to cover expenses such as rent at the cost of limiting resources for teaching and learning. She urged the government to help top kids find vacated school premises. Education Secretary Eddie Ng said his department has been looking at available sites in the Tin Shui Wei area. My colleagues already talked to them, highlighting that all together, in terms of capacities, there should be around 1,500 at least in the, in the region, in the district. And as far as the, uh, the voucher scheme type of school places, it's over 1,100. 
He promised to look into claims that Zenith has been charging parents enrollment and reservation fees for the new school even before its registration has been finalised with the Education Bureau. Civic Party lawmaker Kenneth Chan said parents have complained to him that Zenith asked them to stop paying admission, reservation and book fees. Chan urged the government to investigate the problem and find a way for top kids to continue teaching. What the government could do is to use some of the uh, vacant premises in the neighbourhood to assist the existing kindergarten to go through this difficult moment. Uh, maybe a short-term lease, a transition arrangement on certain conditions because we are talking about some public resources. Many parents whose children will be left high and dry by Top Kids closure are worried they won't be able to find alternative places before the start of the next school year. Zedith tried to reassure parents by publishing a statement in a Chinese language newspaper today. It's offering places to all of the affected children and promising to charge them a maximum 5% more than Top Kids in tuition fees. Top Kids charges $3,200 to $3,900 per month. Zenith's original fees range from $3,400 to $4,100 a month. This afternoon, Zenith managers insisted they had not broken any rules in charging enrollment fees and were willing to give refunds. They dodged questions as to whether they were charging fees for the new school which has yet to be registered, but claimed they had made it clear to parents they could choose which branch they wanted their children in. Top Kids principal Carol Chan said she hopes Zenith will keep its word, but she wants to be allowed to operate for an extra year for the sake of the children. Berlin, ATV News. Financial Secretary John Tsung has warned that public services will suffer because funding will be delayed in June by a filibuster of his budget bill. Radical lawmakers have tabled a record 1,900 amendments to the bill, and the pro-government camp is urging the LegCo president to kill the filibuster. John Zhang was in the hot seat today as lawmakers began discussing his budget. One after another, the government's political opponents criticized the financial secretary's spending blueprint as misdirected, inadequate and misery. It will get even more uncomfortable for Zhang next week as they start debating more than 1,900 amendments to the budget bill tabled by radical lawmakers who want to delay its passage. One of their main demands is a universal pension scheme. With the bickering set to last until June, Zhang warned today that by deliberately delaying the passage of the bill, the radicals are putting the functioning of government departments at risk. The 2,000 or so amendments will definitely uh, slow down everything, uh, and it creates a lot of risk uh, in, in terms of, uh, of our, our spending pattern. Zhang predicted it will take more than 60 hours to finish voting on all the proposed amendments if every lawmaker takes two minutes to discuss each item. As you know, the, the vote on account allowed us 20 percent of uh, interim uh, funding that would last us until the end of uh, May, uh, be beginning in June. Uh, some of the departments and bureaus would face difficulty and we need to deal with that problem, but I'm sure the legislators uh, are just as concerned as I am uh, not to disrupt the, the, the services that we provide to the people of Hong Kong. Last year, a similar budget filibuster with 751 amendments took more than 120 hours of debate over two weeks. LegCo President Zhang yuk sing killed that filibuster by throwing out amendments that were deemed repetitive or frivolous and imposing a deadline in a controversial move that was criticized as abuse of power. This time, the radicals are trying to counter such a move by streamlining their amendments. But the pro-establishment camp is already urging the LegCo president to kill the filibuster again. Deby Chairman Tam Yu Chung accused the pan-democrats of ignoring the consequences if public services are deprived of funding. Unionist Wang Kuo Ping urged the LegCo president to be brave and ensure taxpayers don't end up footing a $30 million bill for the filibuster. Two proposals submitted by Zhang Yuk Sing in February to stop filibusters have yet to be approved by a committee on LegCo rules. 
It looks like the Pan Democrats will get their chance for an exclusive meeting with top mainland officials to discuss political reform, but only because pro government lawmakers will leave the room for their benefit. There's still no official confirmation of a separate meeting for the Pan Democrats, and several of them are boycotting the trip to Shanghai this weekend. With 57 of Hong Kong's 70 lawmakers headed for an ice breaking trip to Shanghai this weekend, the chief executive today expressed hope that all the arrangements for their visit would be ready in time. Before leaving for the Boao Economic Summit on Hainan Island, Lun Chenying told reporters that he had passed on the pan democratic camp's demand for exclusive talks with top mainland officials without the presence of their pro establishment colleagues. Tam Chung of the pro government DAB said his party was happy to leave the pan democrats to it. The trip will include a half-day meeting with Beijing's point man on Hong Kong affairs, Wang Guangya, and Li Fei, chairman of the Basic Law Committee. It'll be a rare chance for the pan-democrats to raise their concerns about universal suffrage. A closed-door meeting about the trip to Shanghai was held today, and there is speculation the meeting with Wang and Li and all 57 lawmakers will be held on Sunday afternoon. But Democratic Party lawmaker Sin Chung Kai claimed that the Secretariat had not confirmed the detailed itinerary, and the meeting they're demanding is not certain. Meanwhile, Chief Secretary Carrie Lam held a 90-minute meeting with members of the pro-establishment New People's Party this morning on political reform. Lam called on a group of academics who proposed a public nomination element in the next chief executive election to explain how their plan would comply with the broader reform principles. Under the plan put forward earlier this month by 18 academics, a candidate who receives signatures of support from 2% of registered voters, or about 70,000 people, would have their name put before the 1,200-member nominating committee. Lam made it clear that the basic law required the final nomination right to be left exclusively with the nominating committee, and the academics were in line with the mini-constitution. Uh, I believe that uh, as long as in this um, consultation uh, period uh, we receive uh, very concrete proposals and these proposals are based on provisions in the basic law, there will stand a very good chance for us to forge consensus and to achieve the objective of universal suffrage in the selection of the chief executive in 2017. Former Chief Secretary Henry Tang, who ran in the 2012 chief executive election and lost, made it clear that it was important to give candidates enough time to present their manifesto so that the electorate was well informed before casting its votes. I believe that because this is the first time we will have universal suffrage, meaning one man, one vote, that the first, the first, this arrangement will be a fairly high threshold and it will be a fairly tightly uh, regulated environment. And I very much believe that each candidate should have sufficient time so that he can fully uh, elaborate and explain on his, uh, on his uh, views, on his vision of what Hong Kong should be like, how he, he plans to take Hong Kong into that direction, and also on his manifesto, on all the aspects of his manifesto. Tang made it clear that he did not plan to run in the next election because he would be 65 and the SAR would benefit from a younger person at the helm. Still to come on ATV's main news tonight, Auction House says police help no longer needed to find $28 million painting that may have been dumped in a landfill. Ukraine gives 48-hour deadline for pro-Russian separatists to end occupation of government buildings. Stay 